you carry that hatred and you say you are born again being born again means you are free from all those sins and then sometimes uh, uh, look at this it tells us in uh, galatians uh, in galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 it tells us in verse 20 and verse 21 Galatians chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 20 and uh, verse 21. It tells us, look at verse 20, it talks about idolatry, it talks about witchcraft, and then hatred, hatred. I'm not a witch, but you have hatred. I'm not a sorcerer, but you have hatred. I don't have powers of darkness, but you have hatred. Then the same group, then the same verse, they follow one another. It says idolatry. You don't worship idol and witchcraft. You don't have witchcraft. I about hatred and variance and emulation and wrath. And wrath. It shows in your, in your disposition. It shows in your breathing. It shows in everything that you do. It shows in the way you look. It shows, you know, if you are smiling and laughing with somebody now and you are very happy and then this other person comes all of a sudden, the appearance of that person will poison your conversation. It's like the moment you see him, the moment you see her, that kind of hatred will just come up like this. If it continues like that, you cannot get to heaven. Look at this in verse 21. Envying and murders and drunkenness and reveling and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I pray things will change. I said I pray things will change. You know, when we came to the church here for the first time, all we wanted was salvation. All we wanted was, I just want to repent. The word of God is being taught in that place. And I want to give myself to the word of God. It, does, it didn't matter to me, it didn't matter to you. What other people said, what other people did, how other people acted. All I wanted, I wanted the word of God in that place so that when the trumpet shall sound, I will get to heaven. But little by little by little, you dropped your interest in the word of God. Yes, you still come for Bible study. That's why you are here today. And you still read the Bible. That's why you have the Bible in your hand there. But your interest in the word of God has gone down. All you want now is to do this and do this and do that. And then the way we react to you and the way we talk to you and the way we interact with you. How could he talk to me like that? Doesn't he know now I am so and so very high there? Come down. Because if you remain in that pride and you're bringing anger in your heart, every time you want everybody to be hovering around you and worshiping you and then prostrating and kneeling down, if that's in your heart, you might not get to heaven. And then those of us who will not, those of us like Mordecai, that will look at Haman and will say, no, we worship the Lord, we're not going to worship Haman, then Haman is going to get angry. And Haman is going to say, who is this person? What does he think he is? That all the other people are worshipping me and he is not worshipping me. Well, we'll not worship you. Do whatever you will. But you must remember what happened to him and he went to hell prematurely. I, I pray you'll not go to hell. That all this hatred, all this animosity, everything will be cleansed today by the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' name. Give me a better, better. Amen. Hatred explain. Let me explain to you. Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. It tells us in Genesis chapter 27, we're talking about a man. You've heard his name before. When I read it now, you'll understand. Genesis chapter 27, and we're reading from verse 41. Genesis 27, we're reading from verse 41. And Esau, that's the man, hated Jacob. And Esau hated Jacob. And Esau hated Jacob. This chapter 27, <clears throat> something had happened. Jacob did wrong. And Jacob thought, already you sold the birthright to me. This transaction is like commerce. I give you something, trade by butter, and then you give me the uh, birthright. And now my father is saying, come for the blessing of the birth. And I think, no, I'm the one that will take that because you already sold it to me. I paid for that. And so Jacob went and he got the birthright. And then Esau came later. And Esau saw that Jacob had got the birthright. 
He became angry. Why are you angry? You sold it. Why are you angry? You said you don't want it. Why are you angry? You threw it away. Why are you angry? In a moment of rashness, you said, take it. I don't want it. And now we are taking it because you said you don't want it. And now you are angry. And he said, Jacob hated Esau. Let me show you something. Because if you read uh, what I'm going to read in Ezekiel, you'll not understand. If you don't understand Genesis uh, chapter 36. Genesis chapter 36. I'm reading to you from verse 8 and verse 9. Genesis chapter, 38, chapter 36. And we're reading from verse 8. And we're reading from verse 9. It says, Then dwelt... Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. The place of abode, the countryside, the country place of Esau and his descendants is referred to as Seir. Now come to Ezekiel, far, far away from Genesis. Ezekiel chapter 35. In Ezekiel chapter 35, we're reading here from verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 35, we're reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, And say unto each, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir. Remember, Mount Seir. Who does that belong to? Tell me out loud. Yes, sir. Thank you. I am against thee. And I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Look at this, Numbers 5. It says, Because thou hast had perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time that of their calamity in the time that their iniquity had an end you know what happened Esau had hatred in Genesis against Jacob and then as he was growing old he still had that hatred and then he sowed that hatred in the hearts of his own children and said I hate Jacob, I hate his descendants. So if you belong to me, if you are my children, you must hate Jacob and hate the children of Israel. They said, yes, sir, they did. Those people, first generation, following after Esau, they told the grandchildren to Esau, they said, our father Esau hated Jacob, hated his children. You hear we are passing that on to you. You must say them. They said, yes, sir. That generation passed it on until this time of Ezekiel. Hundreds of years have passed. And yet, what, what Esau began, that hatred became perpetual. That, you know, he himself hated Jacob. And Jacob pleaded. And Jacob begged. He said, take all these things and go and give to my brother Esau. And then he said, go tell him, I'm coming with 400 people. And then he prayed all through the night, God deliver me. Don't let this man come and destroy me and my family. And when they met, Jacob prostrated many times. And they hugged one another and they kissed one another. And Jacob wept and Esau said, that's all right, it's all over. And, but Jacob could tell, he saw it in his eyes. And when Esau said, let's, let's move on. He said, no, all these uh, people, they are young. You go. So I don't overdrive them. And he went. And Esau still carried that hatred. Are you like that? And you pass that hatred to other people? You pass that animosity to other people? And the people that were not even born, when those things happened, they didn't even know anything. Now, they are showing that same hatred, that same hatred, because you planted it in their hearts. And these people, what did they know about what happened many years ago? That's what we're talking about. And the Lord is saying, 
you hinder these other people from getting to heaven because now they have the hatred. You tell your children, you must hate the children of those people. You tell your tribe, you must hate all those people. It's the hatred you are passing on. And when, look at that verse 5 again. Because that was, that was that perpetual hatred. Perpetual hatred. And that hatred also generated all the things. I pray that the Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. So you come to the Lord and say, well, I want to get to heaven. All this hatred, animosity, and bitterness, and all that, I want to stop all that today. So that the Lord will cleanse you. He'll save you. He'll restore you. And then he'll change your life. And everything will come to an end in Jesus' name. But you know, the hatred of Esau meant nothing to Jacob. I've done my part. I've apologized to him. I tried to give him things, but he said he had enough. He'll not receive anything. And then I've said to you with the Lord. And when you come to the Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith Moses, by faith Jacob, by faith this. They mentioned the name of Jacob by faith. They never mentioned the name of Esau. Jacob is now in heaven. Esau, all that hatred did not matter, did not do anything to Jacob at all. You are the loser. Because now Esau is in hell. How can we say that Hebrews chapter 12, I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 12, and we're looking at verse 15. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, it says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Many children of Esau defiled by that hatred. And many generations following after you saw defiled because of that hatred, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who sold, uh, who, who for one muscle of, uh, of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that uh, afterwards, when he would have received uh, the blessing, it was, it was rejected because he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He sought it with tears, but it was gone. I pray for us, our time will not go in Jesus' name. You see, somebody has written this, uh, you know, he's talking about uh, the Lord himself. He said, you call me Savior and believe me not. You call me Master and obey me not. You call me Shepherd and follow me not. You call me Lord and serve me not. You call me Eternal and seek me not. You call me Judge and fear me not. You call me King and honor me not, you call me love, and desire me not, you call me might, and trust me not, if I condemn you, blame me not. Because it's provided all the salvation, it's provided forgiveness, and you say, Lord, Lord, shepherd, it's my savior, it's this, and yet you do not repent from your sin. It says, you call me everything, and yet you'll not repent, if I condemn you on the final day, blame me not. I pray you will not be condemned. Because there is the chance for you to say, Lord, all this one I forsake. All these things, I turn away from them. I want Jesus Christ to be my Lord and my Savior. And I will not remain in all these evil things. Let's come to point number three now. And this is essential precept for saints in Christ. We're looking at First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 7. First John chapter 2 verse 7. It says, uh, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which sin is true in him and in you, because that darkness, the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. It's talking about a new commandment. It said to start with, I write no new commandment unto you. What did he say that? Oh, he said from the very beginning, all this commandment of loving one another has been there. To love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, that commandment has been there. Come to, uh, come to Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I'm reading here from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verse 6, so that you will see that the commandment to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind has always been there because God is love from the before the beginning of the world. That's the attributes of God. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, and it says, The Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul 
that thou mayest live. He said, that's the commandment of the Lord. That's why it circumcises the heart, sanctifies the heart. That's why it takes away the Adamic nature. That's why it takes away that inbred sin. That's why it takes away that depravity so that you can love the Lord with all your heart without any reservation. It was already there in the Old Testament. Look at Leviticus. I'm reading from verse 19. Leviticus chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 18. Leviticus chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 18. To love your neighbor. In verse 18, this is what it says. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge. Huh? Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge. Nor bear any grudge. That's where bitterness starts, bearing grudge. That's where hatred begins, bearing grudge. That's where fighting begins, bearing grudge. He did something, maybe he didn't even know that he did anything. And because he did something that you judge wrong, you judge negative, and the fellow is just having a nice time, doesn't even know he, he did anything wrong, and you're bearing grudge because of that, bitterness will come, hatred will come. You'll be on your way to hell. But it says in verse 18, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. That's why John, the beloved, said, I'm writing to you concerning love. It's not a new thing. Come back to First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. And now we read in verse 8. It says again, A new commandment I write unto you which thing is true in him and in you because that the darkness is past and the true light now shineth he said well it's, it's a new commandment it's not a new commandment because it had been written in the bible deuteronomy leviticus all the old testament that law was there but it is new because the darkness and the veil of the old covenant is over the hardness of heart in the old covenant is over Christ has now come and Christ has come to demonstrate unto us what love is and how to love he loved his disciples you saw that he loved God you saw that he loved the sinners you saw that he sacrificed himself and demonstrated perfect love he said because darkness is past because the veil is gone from our eyes and because the confusion is gone it's a new commandment and that's why Jesus said in John, John chapter 13, reading from verse 34. John chapter 13, we're looking at it from verse 34. Here it tells us 13 34 of the gospel according to St. John. It says in verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you that she love one another. Here is the new part of it now, as I have loved you. It's no more like the Old Testament. You love them as you love yourself, love your neighbor as you love yourself he says now I've demonstrated love for you and I've shown you that I love you more than myself I carried your sin I carried your shame I carried your sorrow I made myself poor that you might be rich I came and suffered so that you will not suffer. I carried eternal punishment for you so that you will not be punished. I'll show you that I didn't just love you as I love myself. I love you more than myself. It says, now this new commandment I give unto you. The old is gone. The darkness is gone. Love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that she and my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. And then he tells us in First John chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse, uh, reading here from verse 10. Look at First John chapter 2 verse 10. He tells us in verse 10, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. What's the opposite of that? He that hateth his brother abideth in darkness. You hate your wife? You abide in darkness. And that's why you should not take a decision when you have hatred, when you have bitterness. Because you are in darkness. You can't see your way. You don't know where you are going. 
you know, you are angry, you want to take a decision, you are bitter, you want to take a decision, and you are frustrated, you want to take a decision. An angry man is living in darkness. You don't have the light to be able to take the right decision when you are in the dark. But when love has come, when all that darkness is gone, when the bitterness is gone, it says, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no, there is none occasion of stumbling in him. You'll not throw something in front of somebody to make him stumble when you have love. You'll not do something to make a person provoked and then fall and lose his step and miss his way and lose his consecration commitment to the Lord if you love him. He says, if you love, there'll be no stumbling block you're going to put in the face of anyone. The Lord is talking to us that today we must come back to Calvary. We'll go back to Calvary. Am I talking to somebody there? I said, we'll go back to Calvary. And then we're going to have the, the mark of loyalty. The mark of loyalty. What's the mark of loyalty? Because he's my master. Because he's my Lord. The mark in my life is I want to follow him in everything. And also we're going to have the model of lifestyle. What's the model of lifestyle? The Lord Jesus Christ himself. Because he that says he abides in him must walk even as he walked. We're going to have that model of lifestyle. And then the manifestation of his love. Manifestation of his love. Because we believe him. And because he lives in us. The Christ who lives in us does not have hatred, does not have bitterness. And because he lives in us and through us, he wants to manifest that love. Number one, you experience redemption through his love. Experience redemption through his love. He died for you on the cross of Calvary. And you come to Calvary now you say, I want to experience redemption through his love. Number two, you enter into relationship, the relationship of his love. Because you see, this love we're talking about is a relationship. He redeemed you because he loved you. And then you enter into this relationship, and a relationship of love. And therefore, you love him and you love all the people that belong to him. And every time you see anyone belonging to Christ, because I love Christ, I love the person belonging to Christ, I enter into relationship of his love. You embrace the responsibility of his love. You see, responsibility, love will do something. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And you say, this is love. Somebody is sick, what's the responsibility? Take care of him. Somebody is naked, what's the responsibility? You clothe him. Somebody is hungry, what's the responsibility of love? You give him food, you end, you embrace the responsibility of his love. You exercise the restraint of his love. The restraint of his love. Your love will restrain us. If you love somebody, there are things you will never do. Love will restrain you. If you love somebody, there are things you'll never say. Because, you know, if I say that, it will hurt her. If I say that, it will hurt him. There are things you'll never plan. If I plan that and carry out that plan, it will destroy that man. It will destroy that woman. There is a restraint of love. Love will restrain you. It will restrain your action. It will restrain your behavior. It will restrain your attitude. You have, you have the redemption through his love. And you have the relationship of his love. You have the responsibility of his love. You have the restraint of his love. You establish the reconciliation because of his love. Reconciliation because of his love. If there's somebody that, you know, he goes this way, you go that way. Now you understand. That, that's hatred. That's animosity. That's bitterness. Why is it you don't want to see his face? Why is it you don't, you don't want to look at him face to face? Why is it you're afraid of his face? Afraid of his smile? Afraid of interaction with him? And then he's coming this way. You are going the other way. When this love gets into you today, thank God is coming to you today. Are you there? I said, thank God love is coming to you today. It will bring you to the establish of reconciliation because of his love. And then there's the remembrance of his love. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time you take this bread, every time you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death that he died for you until he comes and is coming again. The remembrance of his love at the Lord's Supper. You will not be avoiding the Lord's Supper, running away from the Lord's Supper. You're always being disqualified from the Lord's Supper. You don't love the Lord and you don't remember what he has done for you. You're looking for, when are we going to take the Lord's Supper? I want the remembrance of his love. His love 
for me, that he died for me on the cross of Calvary, I want to remember that. You want to uh, ensure the remembrance of his love. You want to exemplify renewal in his love. Renewal in his love. You wake up in the morning, Lord, give me back the first love. Lord, give me back the fresh love. Lord, give me back the fervent love. And if you're a real child, I want to love him more. I want to look at what he did for me and look at what he gave up for me and look at all the lengths he went for me, the first love and the fresh love and the fervent love. I want to renew that love every day. That's what the Lord is calling us to. And he says, if you love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and you love your fellow brother, your fellow sister, just like I have loved you, you have fulfilled the whole law. If you love, you're not going to steal. If you love, you're not going to commit adultery with another man's wife. If you love, you're not going to tell a lie. If you love, you're not going to condemn another person. If you love, you're not going to kill another person. If you love, you're not going to bear false witness. Love is a fulfillment of the totality of the word of God because it's a summary of the prophets and the law. And the Lord is calling us today to come back to Calvary. There is love flowing from Calvary. It will flow into your heart. It will flow into your soul. And your life and everything around will change. Your personality will change. Your family will change. Your life will change. Your conduct will change. And then you will know for sure, I am born again. Because he that loveth is in the light. And he has eternal life. He that eateth does not have eternal life abiding in him. You know that is a murderer. And a murderer does not have eternal life abiding in them. We can come back to Calvary today. And the Lord, he will forgive he will cleanse, it will change, it will put away our feet in the path of love, of righteousness again, it will happen. Somebody there said it will happen. We're going to rise up and we're going to pray. You call on the Lord and say, Lord, I need this. I need this. I need this. Renew my love for you. Renew my love for my brethren. Renew my love for your word. Renew my love for your worship. I don't want any form of hatred, any form of bitterness, anything that is not of you, Lord. I reject everything. I just want you to be the crown of my life and the joy of my Christian experience. To open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Say God to remove everything that is not of God in your life. The hatred, the lying, the fornication, the false weakness, whatsoever be that thing that you know that will not take you to heaven. If the trumpet should sound now, you ask God to take it away from your life. The word of God we have heard now. It's really, really touched my life. I don't know about you, but for me, it was a direct message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise, O oh God, for a time like this. Lord, we thank you, God, for an eye-opening, for reminding us once again the reason for the whole of the scripture. The reason why we are here. For reminding us the reason why we come to the church to hear your word, Father. I know, Lord, because, oh God, your love for us is unto repentance. That we might change our ways and be holy and be righteous. So that we will be able to make heaven. Lord, help us. In our daily lives, help us. In our home, help us. In the secret, help us. When we are alone, O oh Lord, help us, O oh God, to remain in your word. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we should dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever and ever. Amen. Say to your neighbor, keep God's commandments. Keep God's commandments. Keep God's commandments. Keep God's commandments.